Welcome back to another episode of Geek Skeezers and Googleization, where experts discuss and share best practices to manage the convergence of the wired, the tired, and technology. I'm your host, Ira Wolf. Well, welcome, 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 in the words of John Oliver. Uh, welcome back to another episode of Geek Skeezers and Googleization. I'm really excited today. Our topic's going to be the future of HR. And um, I'll give you just a little heads up of, of what prompted this. Last week, I was giving a presentation to a uh, county SHRM group and on, uh, on recruiting in the age of Googleization. Uh, and anyone who's interested, still start booking for the end of 2018, beginning of 2019. So if anyone listening is uh, a member of an association, of a SHRM group, of a business group, chambers, let me know. Happy to do some presentations and keynotes. Uh, but what happened during that group is one of the things that concerns me uh, about HR, and I know there's lots of topics about being uh, kind of getting a seat at the table, you know, that's been, uh, I've been in this business for tw over 20 years, and I think that's been the hot topic ever since then. And one of the, uh, uh, right before my presentation, uh, they had a few introductions to make, and one of the participants uh, in this uh, meeting got up and introduced herself, and apparently she was away for a few years to raise a family, and I know you can't see this, but she introduced herself by saying, hi, my name's Missy, and it's really good to be back in, and as she said HR, she did these air quotes around them, which I'm not sure what that means, but I've never seen anybody put air quotes around HR, except maybe some higher level, some C-level executives that don't think much of HR. So that was a, a bit disconcerting. Uh, the other thing that I noticed in that meeting was that 100%, literally 100% of the participants, and there was about 35 or 36 uh, people that uh, attended that meeting, they were all women, uh, not a single man in the group, uh, which sort of fits with that stereotypical role of HR, um, and not that men make it better, but I think that's a concern uh, of what, wh where things are going when, when um, uh, again, when it becomes a women-only profession or association, uh, especially on a, to a strategic topic of HR. So I'm really excited to have, and, and then there's one other thing which will lead into my introduction here. I'm really excited to have a good friend and colleague, Ed Crow. Uh, Ed, good morning. Hey, Ira, how are you? We've been, I think we met each other, um, you know, way too long. <laughs> well, not too long ago. <laughs> yeah. Friendship's been great, but uh, maybe 17, 18 years ago, we were both teaching uh, the chamber to do a, a supervisory training program, and we decided to merge uh, our talents, and it worked out really, really well. And uh, ever mm -hmm. since then, we've been... Uh, and I've done a lot of work together and been good friends and colleagues. So uh, really pleased to have you here. And I know you share some of the same um, uh, concerns and, and, and well as optimism of, of what the future is. Absolutely. Uh, so as I was walking out of that meeting, I, I opened, I caught up on my phone and there was an email from you with, uh, I wouldn't say a similar story, but a complimentary story uh, that happened. So, you know, if you can share that a little bit and then we can go into what are some of our worries and concerns and what the future of HR looks like. Sure, sure. You know, like, like you, Ira, I, uh, I, I get concerned about the expectations that are on HR and HR's ability to meet those expectations. Uh, like you, I was, I was recently in a session of rather new folks into the HR field, and again, as they're going around introducing themselves, uh, one young lady said, hi, I'm so-and-so, uh, I have a background in social work, and I got into HR to show that not all HR people are mean. And <laughs> I thought, oh, uh, okay. <laughs> I didn't realize we were all mean. Uh, but, but my bigger concern was, all right, so you're bringing the social worker mentality, where's the business focus? And, and for me, that's one of my con biggest concerns about the future of HR is that um, while I don't feel like you have to have a, a true HR background in terms of a degree or formal education to get into HR, you darn well have to have 
some business savvy. And, and if we continue to attract people who don't have business savvy or are not willing to get it, uh, HR will continue to be the laughing stock that we see portrayed in the media today. Yeah, no, ab absolutely. Uh, I, I know you, uh, you know, we were working on a project together, and I think this feeds into, um, uh, like, again, uh, you know, some of the challenges that I see, uh, and the lack of business acumen is certainly one of those, although mm -hmm. um, there is, seems to be a trend for even MBAs and, C and finance people to, to be going into HR. I'm not sure that, I, I think from, uh, kind of tracking or, or building some metrics or becoming a little bit more evidence based that may be that may be a good move uh, mm -hmm. but it you know but that certainly then replaces many of the people that used to have a traditional path in there so I mean I, I one of the things that I see is is that people just don't question um, some of the conventional practices you know and and you you know I mean I focus on the pre-hiring aspect and spending mm -hmm. a lot of time recently talking about the application and, you know, some of the criteria even. I was listening to a, a podcast uh, just yesterday and it talked about, uh, you know, why do, school, why, do, why do so many businesses still rely on a GPA? And, 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 and even with the GPA is what makes a, a 3.8 GPA better than a 3, you know, a 2.8? If the individual who had 2.8 you know, is working two jobs, maybe has a family, and was involved in, in uh, campus life. Maybe they, they participated and they, they led some uh, groups or associations or some chapters or they were involved in the community. So here you'd have somebody who did nothing but has a 3.8 and went to the right school versus somebody who has a 2.8 and has learned to, uh, you know, juggle a busy life, different obligations, uh, reprioritize, and participated in the community. I mean, mm -hmm. that, that still doesn't seem to get questioned, or when it does, uh, it gets, a, you know, HR doesn't seem to have that strong voice. I mean, are you seeing the same thing? Yeah, absolutely. Um, my view, and, and to be honest, I tend to have you know, a rather conservative outlook on, on life in general, but I think one of the challenges for HR is that we're too conservative. I, I think that uh, if we want to help our businesses advance to the, the next stage, whether that's a, a growth or, or getting out of some sort of stagnation, uh, to, to poise ourselves to, to be competitive in the future, we've got to be a little more open-minded about not only the types of people that we're looking for, but where we're looking for them. Uh, you, you hear constantly about this shortage of talent. And in some areas, uh, it's absolutely true that we're, we're lacking, you know, say chemists. Okay, you just don't go out and find a chemist off the street. But in many cases, we're overlooking people that we may have in our own facilities that are trainable, and for whatever reason, we're not willing to invest the time and energy into training people up to get the skills that our company's going to need, but we're willing to spend the time and energy banging on doors in the outside world trying to find these same people, and then we'll complain that they're not out there. And, um, you know, I think that if HR is going to be that, that true strategic partner, that they've got to be much more forward thinking and much less reactive. Uh, HR tends to be uh, very, what do you need me to do, instead of here's what I see the company needs and this is why I see it that way and here's how HR is going to go help this, this organization out. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I, and again, I mean, I, I, like you, I, I read and listen to a lot and try to get out there and listen to people. Um, this comment that just stuck with me the other day, and, it, and it's so simple, is where's the evidence that a particular degree makes someone a more successful employee? So, you know, obviously, if you're hiring an engineer or a chemist, you need people that have studied chemistry or engineering. Um, mm -hmm. But does that have to be their their primary college major degree? Um, you know, can there be different paths? Can they have a dual major? 
Um, can they have a combination of, of, of transferable skills? They've learned something in business which transfers to engineering, uh, and they have enough chemistry background or engineering background or whatever it might be uh, to do the job. But when you're looking for people who have good critical thinking skills, good problem solving skills, um, you know, are able to uh, collaborate, um, are passionate about continuous learning. You know, I, I'm not sure it matters, but we still say we need you need a chemistry degree or an engineering degree or a business degree uh, to do that particular job. And and, and the, the bigger challenge, I don't even see it being questioned. It, 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 right. it, it, it's not that that's where that is. Um, and so I, I don't want to turn HR into a algorithmic um, formula. <laughs> well, that's how mm -hmm. everything's done. Um, but it seems that every question I ask, there, there really doesn't, there is a lack of evidence, uh, you know, uh, for that. So here, let me throw this out to you. Here, here's one of my sure. concerns, and maybe this is the ap apocalyptic version of HR. If, mm -hmm. if HR, after all these years, is not, is not getting a seat at the table, and if it truly is becoming this administrative compliance uh, factor, uh, with and you know, I've written a lot and kind of focused a lot on on robots and automation. Uh, and it, mm -hmm. what you know, I, I, I truly don't believe that 95% of the workforce is going to be thrown out of, of, or even 50% is going to be eliminated in in the next right. decade or two with that. But the the statistics that I I like to quote, and I believe it's absolutely true, is at least two thirds of all positions will be at least one third automated. And I don't mm -hmm. think a lot of the people have the skills, uh, you know, in even understanding technology. But in a bigger sense, if, if HR doesn't move forward, why wouldn't, um, and we've seen it already, ha I've seen it happening, CFOs and business majors have started to, to, be, to oversee HR, and maybe that's a good thing. That brings in the business mm -hmm. sense. But from talent management, um, is operations going to... Um, take over that responsibility because they're going to be responsible for the automation on the robots and if the robots replace some of the jobs and the people um, mm -hmm. are, are they the ones going to be making those strategic decisions of who should work alongside of a robot or uh, assist them on technology which means that if HR is not doing talent acquisition and talent management and they're not doing the finance, what's left? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I think certainly, and, and having an operations background myself, I think was hugely important for me in my, my earlier days of HR. Um, and, and even today when I'm working with clients and I can sit there with a business owner and, and I can talk in terms of how their people problems are impacting the operation, it certainly has, has lent more credibility to those discussions. And so I think that if HR wants to continue to have that impact, then they have to get out from behind the desk. Or they are going to be relegated to a purely administrative paper-pushing function, which we were 20 years ago, and we've tried hard to get away from that. And so I, I think you're really on to something that, when you talk about an automated work environment, uh, including robots and maybe through uses of, of virtual realities and, and, and AI, then you're, you're talking about the people who are actually managing that function, managing those processes as well, and the people that are interacting with those processes. And so HR could be on a fast track to becoming irrelevant uh, in, in business. And so, um, I don't think that's the best outcome that there could be because I think that uh, your operators need to stay focused on the operation themselves and they've got, they've got a lot on their plate already. And so HR has to be willing to transform its thinking. Uh, you mentioned about, well, I have to have a degree in this particular area and, and to me that's silliness. Um, you know, I, I tend to think of things more in a skill set. What skill set are you bringing to the table? But if HR can't or is unwilling to make that leap in its thought process, they're going to continue to lose ground in terms of not only their credibility, but their importance within an organization. And so 
for, for HR folks who are concerned about the, the future of business and, and the future of the profession, again, I, I can't stress enough, you can't sit back and do what you've always done, even though maybe it's worked for the last 10 years. It's not going to work 10 years from now. It's probably not going to work five years from now. So, so trying to leave everyone with some, I, I guess, some, some hope and, and some guidelines, uh, I've got two questions for you. Okay. The first is, uh, and I know you work with a lot of uh, business owners and executives and C-level, um, what would you advise them, um, if, you know, if you if, – when you're brought in, and it's not even an if, when, when you're brought in and they're saying, you know, we're concerned, uh, we're not sure if we have the right HR people in place or even the right plan, what, mm -hmm. what would you advise them, who should they be looking for in, to lead their um, human resources, um, human capital, whatever, you know, whatever buzzword we want to right. use, but, uh, you know, what, what would you advise them to do? Well, they've got to find someone who... Hey, let's go back to the business savvy, who can understand how their business makes money. So, um, I, you know, I believe, in, and, and I, I don't think it's, it's hard, but I'm amazed at the number of HR people I talk to, and I say, you know, when was the last time you went out and walked your shop floor, or you walked around the warehouse, or just walked around the office? And, and I get these blank stares, and people say, well, Ed, we don't have time to do that. And my <laughs> response always, how do you have time to not do that? <laughs> Wow. Um, you know, I um, you know, I guess early on in my career, I just thought, you know, uh, I've hired these people. I want to go out and see how they're doing. So I want to get out on the floor. I want to talk to them. And there are there is so much knowledge to be gained by that, and so much respect from your operators. You know, you're no longer uh, this person with uh, clean hands that never leaves the desk. You're willing to get out there on the shop floor, talk to people, head off concerns. You know, maybe you put some fires out for those operators. That's what, what, really, what business needs as a grassroots HR person. But that same HR person has to understand the numbers behind the business. Why do we make the money that we make? How do we make it? And how does HR support those numbers? So it's not just in hiring the best widget makers, but what about the sales team that's going to sell those widgets, and how do we incent them to sell our highest profit margin widgets? Um, how do we I help sales identify what markets to go into and make it a smart market, not just because our widgets are needed in that market, but there is good human capital to be, be had in that market as well. Those are the kind of strategic business partner issues that a a CEO is craving from HR, that I hear it constantly, that either they don't have it or they're not getting it in their, their current person. And oftentimes when I sit and talk to that person, I'm not surprised. If, if I talk to them about a balance sheet or a P&L, they're like, well, I, I kind of know what they are, but I've never seen one. How do you operate HR not looking at a P&L statement and, and knowing what the company's balance sheet looks like? Or, or not developing your HR strategic plan based on the company strategic plan. That's to me. That's like going to the bowling alley and putting a blindfold on and you know throwing the ball and one hoping it's in the right lane and two hoping that you hit a pin. It's, yeah, it's silly. And that, and that leads into my other pet peeve of you know and and I I I continually ask this when and I know you both you and I are on doing a lot of presentations and and so forth, but I continually ask people what's the what evidence do you have that whatever you know whatever practice you're using actually works and mm -hmm. you know you know I, I mean I'm really focusing on the recruitment side and it still boggles my mind that that even a simple question of, of how many when you do a job posting how many people actually have to see the job posting or know that you have a job opening to to get quality hires and, and or you know how many how many people actually are starting an application and you know mm -hmm. what's the best source that you use not not the one that gives you the most candidates but which one uh, provides you the best quality candidate and what's it cost you know just right. just because you can you can post an ad for little or no money on Indeed uh, doesn't necessarily mean that. Um, you're getting the highest ROI. 
because you right. invest a lot of money going through, you know, sifting through the pile of resumes. Uh, many are unqualified, and but pe- but people don't even consider that because they get paid. <laughs> you know, they're right. getting paid. That's right. their job. When when their job really should be the quality of hire, not just putting a body in a you know in a position. So right. the the other corollary, and you sort of I answered this, but um, you know, if you were, and I know you do advise people. If someone says, hey, I'd really like to get into HR, or what do I need to do to secure my future in the next 10 years in, as an HR professional, what skills would you tell them to develop beyond, you know, certainly becoming more business astute, uh, mm-hmm. developing the business acumen? What other skills do you feel that HR needs um, to excel, to, to, to turn this um, around? Yeah, I think one of the, the – absolute things that that I've seen a lot of HR people missing is critical thinking skills. Um, that HR is very much uh, currently based in this is how we do it, this is our process, and this is our policy, and we make our decisions based on that. Okay, you know, that, that may have worked at one time, but businesses are moving way too fast today for that. Um, not unlike technology and how fast it changes and becomes obsolete, we can write a process and a year later that process is obsolete. And so I really think that critical thinking skills are, are at the top of my list of things that uh, HR needs to be working on. Um, and that, in, that includes uh, being able to, uh, to assess situations and to, to think proactively about them. Um, you know, not unlike your, your R&D team has to, to think ahead and say, well, what's the next whiz-bang product that we can, can put out there that our customers want? Um, HR needs to, to get into that same mode of, what's the next thing that, that I can do that's going to attract and motivate and retain the workforce I need for the future? Not sit back and wait to see what the masses are doing. I mean, you, you mentioned about, um, you know, I can throw ads up on Indeed. Well, you know, how many years ago it was Monster was the hot one, and how many years before that it was Career Builder, and there's this herd mentality in HR. Oh, well, that's where everyone's going and everyone's doing it. Okay, let, let's, let's get away from that, and, and, and let's really think about, given the, the organization that I'm with right now and the challenges it has, what's my role in helping to overcome those challenges? Um, to me, the ability to, to critically think through those processes and then – thinking strategically to put a plan in place, that's where, where HR needs to be now. Not, not five years, they need to be there now. And, and there are, I don't mean to sound that, that there's no HR people out there doing because no, clearly there are a lot of really good HR people. Yeah, um, for sure. But uh, um, to, to me, that's, that's the, the, where the critical mass is. Yeah, you know, and, and certainly there's the, that list of being, you know, the, the ability to collaborate and, and, you know, the ability to manage relationships and, and, and organizational savvy, able to manage up and down in an organization. I mean, there's a whole slew, but I, I agree. I mean, I think every position has that critical thinking. And as you were saying that, it's, you know, I guess my my the question that I would throw out there is, is I think HR needs to be comfortable saying, why, why do we do this? You know, why does our Absolutely. application look like this? Why, why are we, why are we using Indeed, or, or, or why did we choose this ATS, or you know, mm-hmm. why are we, you know, what's the best compensation plan or the payroll plan, um, which I know is is your, you know, one of your niches mm-hmm. as well. So it's right. a sense of curiosity. I think that's all part of the critical thinking. Critical thinking has to say, um, you know, why, why do we do this, and and what are what are the other outcomes that are possible. Mm-hmm. So, and, and I, I think uh, okay, go ahead. Ed. I was going to say to add on to that, I, I think that you know once we ask ourselves those questions, if we get back to that being proactive, is coming to management and saying, you know, I've been thinking, here's how we've been doing it, and based on some analysis, here's how I think we can do it better, and here's the ROI on that. Yep, absolutely. Hey, we're we're just uh, you know I try to keep these to you know about 20 minutes um, because I know sure. everybody else is busy, including those listening to us. Uh, as well as us, uh, we got a lot of things to sure, do today. Yeah. Uh, how for uh, I, I have one other question, but before we get there, uh, we sort of bypassed um, you know uh, other than your name, who you are, what you're doing, uh, what your what your niche is, how people can get in touch with you. So if you can share a little bit about yourself, that would be uh, great. Sure. So um, 
I'm currently the uh, the co-founder uh, of Turbo Execs. Uh, I've been uh, in the, the HR world for about 25 years now, and uh, what I find myself doing most is working with business owners and executives who uh, are finding that they they are not able to respond to some of their business challenges, and in many cases, it's because their existing HR function uh, is either inadequate or, or it's absolutely irrelevant to, to what's going on in their business. And so uh, I work with them to, to get that back on track so that their HR function becomes a strategic contributor to their, uh, their business goals. And, and I um, know it's been, it's know been a great ride. Okay. And I know you, you know, I, I've referred you to a couple of people and I know you're working on a lot of projects. Uh, like compensation analysis, mm -hmm. is, you, you do some of that. Um, yeah, I do a lot of compensation planning and system design, yep. And EEO, um, EEO compliance of affirmative mm -hmm. action plans. And uh, succession planning uh, has been a real hot button for the last couple of years. I think folks, uh, you know, to one of your <laughs> uh, wheelhouse items is, is the, the talent shortage and, and the labor storm that we're, that we're kind of in the midst of. And folks are starting to realize there's going to be a lot of knowledge going out, and, and, and we need a succession plan now. Uh, in some cases, we should have been succession planning a year ago, but I've been seeing that as a, as a real upswing in the, the needs of my clients. And if somebody's interested in contacting you, what's the, what's the best ways? Um, they can get me via email uh, at ed at edcrow, and that's K-R-O-W dot com, uh, or via phone at uh, 717 three one four three six eight zero and my website is edcrow.com excellent so for as just to close um, any final words of wisdom uh, you have for either business or HR professionals or both sure sure well I think from a from a business uh, perspective if, if we have some business owners and executives listening um, I, I think it's time to raise your expectations of HR uh, don't assume that, that what you've got is good enough. Um, it may not be. If you're finding that you're struggling in, in certain areas of your business and you're thinking, gosh, I'm not getting you know, any help, I'm not getting the right people in, then, then you've got an inadequate HR function and it's time to take a look at that. And uh, you know, I think on the HR side, um, you have to look at yourself and say, are you providing the level of service that your organization not only expects but needs from you? Uh, they may have lower expectations than what they should of you. So it's not just about whether you've met their expectations, but are you meeting the true needs of the business? Well, Ed, uh, again, the time just goes really fast. I, I know when we even meet for lunch or something, it's, <laughs> we got a million we things talk to talk all day. about. And then, <laughs> never enough time to do it. Uh, but I, right. I appreciate you taking some time out of your day uh, to speak to uh, everyone. Uh, and uh, just for all the listeners, I know uh, Ed, too, like myself, is uh, we're, we're looking for some opportunities to speak at uh, associations. I know last week Ed was just in Nashville talking on leadership. Uh, but if you are uh, a member um, involved with program committee uh, and would be interested in, in getting Ed, you got uh, his information there. Uh, I'll also have it posted on the uh, with the blog uh, with the audio there, uh, how to get in touch with you. And I uh, really appreciate that. Um, again, this is Ira Wolf, uh, Geek Skeezers and Googleization, uh, where we're always talking about the convergence of people and technology, uh, the impacts on that. Uh, you can uh, listen on iTunes on any of the other platforms. You can go to the website of Geek Skeezers and Googleization dot com. And if you do, uh, like Ed, you know, if you have any opportunities to speak at uh, term groups, uh, business associations, business meetings, uh, leadership conferences, uh, please uh, keep me in mind. And you can get information on my website, www.successperformancesolutions.com, or easier is Ira Wolf, I-R-A-W-O-L-S-E.com. Until next week, have a great week, everyone.